Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger is back. A flavor spectacle of pretzel proportion. Featuring Applewood smoked bacon and hot and juicy beef. It puts beer cheese on top of monster cheese and a pretzel bun on top of all that. Simply put, Wendy's Pretzel Pub puts the E-A-T in greatness. Try one today and see for yourself. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger. For a limited time, only at participating Wendy's. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. All right, Steve. Yes. You threw out accusation. Truth. One of the fine members of the broadcasting community, you have sullied their good name by saying that in what should have been a fair and square race, you're alleging, and you're not even saying it's alleged. No, it's the, it's the God's honest you're truth, You're saying that, uh, that there was cheating going on in a donkey race that you were at, <laughs> which doesn't sound right, especially it's, way out of context. It's in context. It's completely legit. Um, now, we're told that the person in question, uh, John Curley, is on the line. Now, which I have to Do you see, think it's true? I don't believe it's true. Uh, and, and look. The Rev came and goes, I think John Curley's yeah. on line one. Because you yeah. said, hey, if John wants to call yeah. in, we'll give him the floor. But I believe that we recognize John enough, and we'll know right off the bat if it's him or not. Uh, so I just want to just want to put that out How there in case somebody tries to do an morning, impression or something. And I don't know if John Curley, if this is John Curley, somebody had to have alerted him at seven fifty in the morning. It's impressive he's up. I, if I wouldn't be up if I was well, doing his he hours. Might be up, I mean, but oh, I, I think the up. last thing he wants to deal with is to find out that, he's <laughs> just, yeah. that we're talking yeah. about a donkey race. And, but he's aware of our show. Would he be? Would he expect anything less or more no. from from what we do? No. Right. Yeah, I think he's probably this pretty much. Awesome. Oh, you told me that's what. They're, uh, yeah, those oh, idiots. So that's great. what they're talking about. All right. So without uh, without any delay, ladies, kids, men, gentlemen, folks of all everything's, John Curley is with us. John, is this you, sir? Yes, it is, BJ. Well, that is your voice. That I did cheat in that donkey race, and I'm proud of. Oh. Hey. Finally. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. Many years. All, we all want. these years, all I wanted all is the truth. Wanted. All right, John, did you, get a, did you get a plaque or a trophy? Because Steve really doesn't have anything on the fireplace mantle. He just wants something to recognize his greatness. I, I, got, a, I got a plaque and a trophy, and they had a, a three-week stay in Tijuana. We could get out <laughs> yeah. there and see a whole bunch of donkeys doing different things. There we go. I missed out on all of that. Wow. You know what? I didn't I, know that John Curley was as worldly of a man as he is, but the man gets. And I still look back and I could still see it with like the chariots of fire music playing, and oh, there yeah. it is, yes. the finish line. And all of a sudden, my donkey turns and goes the wrong direction as John just smiles at me and finishes the race. This is this is. I mean, I what? was making up for the fact that Mitch Levy cheated a oh, long time ago. In a, wow! Yes. Oh, get Mitch on the yeah. phone now too. We <laughs> yeah, need to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, we can because uh, you know we talk to Mitch a lot, and if we, we had no white, see this. This is a, this is a, this is like a, this is donkey gate is what this is. Oh, oh, BJ, this goes way back. Wow. Way back. Dang. So when I was in Washington, D.C., Mitch Lee, who was in D.C., I didn't even know who he was. He was doing sports radio and they had a thing on Bastille Day. You got three champagne glasses and a bottle of champagne on a tray. You had to run from this restaurant down to the gate of the White House, touch the gate. Run back. Wow. Mitch Levy cheated. He never touched the gate. So we get back to the thing, and they're like, oh, making a big deal, and they're doing a big announcement, and all the people there are cheering and yelling. And I looked up at it. I said, that guy, that guy won. He didn't touch the gate. Wow. And they said, rematch, rematch. And at the rematch, he shucked me on the line at the rematch. What? He tried to knock my glasses over. I didn't even know him. He comes to Seattle before I do, and then he just rips me consistently over and over again on the air. Oh, wow. oh horrible stuff. All because horrible all because he me. knows the truth that you were the superior the athlete. Truth. Wow. Yes. 
And, and Steve, so unfortunately, I, I, look at this. And then you t- turned yeah. around and you did me this dirty. Trauma, no, this trauma no, put you on. Oh. Then I did oh. it to Steve. For 20 years, this, I've been, is, this has been sitting in my stomach. Generational trauma. This is not what, I mean, we, well, we have, we're, we're, we're now healing. This is the. I feel better. I this am. is the healing. This is the great. I, I, I wrote a book called "If I Had Cheated on the Donkey Race." <laughs> it is a catchy title, by the way. Uh, yeah. yeah, is it? Can we get that as an e-book, or is that something we can get? Oh, if yeah, we can? Yeah. It's more of a, it's more of a booklet. But I think I can turn uh, it into a podcast that lasts right. three weeks. Now right, we just we need go. to find footage of this. I just wish I could find the actual, like the King Five Evening Magazine piece of uh, the donkey race because that would just be something to keep forever that's fantastic but steve what does it say about you that you're still thinking about this? i mean that dude you've that's been living really rent- that you, part you're, you're, uh, you've been living rent free in my brain for 20 years oh that's great <laughs> I, I hear dominic the donkey during christmas season i curse your name yeah my hockey team's called the donkeys yeah, he's, all because i have this weird obsession with donkeys it's all your fault he's <laughs> held on to this for a very long a long time, time. well while we have john well, it's all I think the moral of the story is all Mitch Levy's fault. You're right. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with that. I, I, I blame him for a lot of things in my life. Why not this? All right, Mitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, John, while we have you on, there's a few people who have been texting in. And I, I don't know if you remember this story. It's my favorite John Curley story. It's back when I worked with Andy Savage. And oh, we, I love this. And, yeah. and Do you remember the cracker story? Yeah. So I was on the air with Andy. <laughs> it's come on every once in a while with you guys. And I said the word crack whore. And then Dan, Andy looked like, hey, 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 hey. You can't say that on the radio. Like, what? He goes, hey, dude, seriously. You, I mean, you wouldn't say that on your show. But I said, that's a bet. I'm not allowed to say that on the radio. He would seem really genuinely offended, Steve. Yep. So then I, I said, I'll say it on the radio. I'll say it on my show to, tomorrow. And he goes, no way. And I said, yeah, sure. I'll say crack whore tomorrow on the ra- on the show. On an evening magazine. And he's like, on evening magazine, you're going to say crack whore. And I said, yes. So I came out of some story. I don't remember what it was. And I said, you know. Uh, the amazing thing is, is that, you know, to talk about challenges in life, try this challenge. Uh, uh, put a crack whore in your mouth and then try to whistle. <laughs> and that was what I said. And I, I got it by management, never noticed it. <laughs> Daryl, my, my cameraman, goes, oh, my God, you went a long way for that. So then the next day, Andy said, well, I got to admit, you did it. He yeah. said the word crack whore. I remember watching that. I remember watching that live on Evening Magazine, and it, and, and, and that, yeah. it, there was that pause, and then you said it, and uh, tears were yep. coming out of my eyes. I'm like, uh, he, John so Curley, is a damn legend. Yeah. That was amazing. Well, that's brilliant. I had to go a long way. I don't know why I mentioned putting a crack whore in your mouth and whistling, but hey, uh, I felt hey, I had to work it in somehow. That's so, what they, yeah. that's what they call entertainment, baby. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but it was but the stupid thing was, BJ. It was only for Andy and Steve. Nobody else. I mean, you know, you know what? You know your audience, John. Somebody tell you who's your audience, and you know them, and you're going to get them. So we you know played what? that audio Bravo. over and over again after that happened. It was the greatest <laughs> thing ever. Well, I, you know, uh, j- first of all, John Curley, uh, afternoons on uh, on Cairo, do, doing a great show. You and yeah. Sherry, right, uh, is the show? Yeah, yeah, we have fun. You know yeah. Sherry, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. And well, of course, I know uh, a good friend of mine and uh, your your uh, former co-host, Tom uh, Tom Tagney, recently retired. Great, Tom great Tagney, guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. you know, while we got you, John, I just want to say, man, look, I, obviously the kind of show you do, it's about hey, here's what we think about this and that, and sometimes people agree, disagree, and it can you know it can get heated. Yeah. But I will say this, and I don't, I hope a lot of people do. Appreciate from a performance standpoint, you are one of the best our business has, and it's so awesome you're in Seattle. And as a as wow. a radio, as yeah as a broadcaster and entertainer, you are one of the best. And I'm really happy to be in the same Jeez. industry with you. So I just wanted to I because I, wow. I, I don't get a chance to see be around you a lot, but I you know I I've tuned in yeah. a lot of times and just thought God the show is so good, and it's because. You entertain first, and boy, is that is that is, that's a credit to the greats in our business, and you're one of them, sir. Oh well, thank you. Well, there's my BJ in the morning right there. That's uh, hey, that's hey, you know really what? And, and John, you. thank you for giving my donkey justice. Yes. <laughs> Which does not sound right. <laughs> I really, I don't know if, uh, you know, is that the sound bite we're going to go with yes. every time? John Curley, thank you for giving you, my donkey you're, you're justice. A, you're a good man in my book now. All right, there you go. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you for letting me come clean. Uh, All right, not a problem. Go Take care, John. All right, right. You can, hopefully you get Bye-bye. some uh, get some you know, napping in there. Yeah, I feel good. You yeah, well, <laughs> it's a massive how about he didn't deny? There was no denying. No, he just me a call. But here's the thing, though. 
we now have to confront Mitch Levy oh, next Mitch. time we talk to Mitch about this. <laughs> Mitch I started this. He started this entire He's cheater. A cheater. Cheater gate. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I pretty mean, sure, I'm pretty sure Mitch is listening because we tried to call him to get him on and no, nothing? went straight to voicemail. Really? Uh, so I think he turned off his phone. Doing? What is he's, he doing? He's ashamed. He, he knows he's being exposed. What is he yeah. doing? It's not even football season and he doesn't have time to Danny talk. Danny's stirring What's the pot doing? over here. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Pot, <laughs> oh, you know what? Here's what Mitch is going to do. I'll address it on uh, Mitch on Mitch Filter. No, no. If you get it on a special Thursday pay show. If it was, that's, the, that's the smart businessman. You do it yeah. on your Patreon yeah. show. You don't, yeah, you don't do it on just the free Mitch Unfiltered. You got to go to MitchUnfiltered.com and I, yeah, pay for that. I can't really argue with it. It's no, a really it's good brilliant. business move. So yeah. I'm sure there'll be a whole whole thing that Mitch will have to address on this controversy. Uh, that was so yeah. epic. Oh, my God. I love that he just vowed, vowed out, just said, I did cheat. Yep. You know was, what? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it takes a big man. And see, yeah, I told you. Yeah, you did. I there honestly, no allegations. I, really, I witnessed it. I didn't have a lot of faith in you, to be honest with I, you. You yeah. lived it. <laughs> I did. I, I legit uh, thought he was going to be like, I don't remember this, you idiot. Like, why are you remembering? <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't it, think but, he would yeah. call. Yeah. And, yeah. Then I, and he remembered... He remembered the crack horse story? Yes. Like as if it happened it's a great yesterday. Story. That the is the greatest story of all story. time. Oh, man, dude. I remember being at home, because this is before DVR, so you had to like VHS record it. And I remember watching it live <laughs> and being like... <laughs> the whole episode goes. I'm like, he's not going to do it. There's yeah. no way. In the final, like, farewell at the end of the episode, like 729 or whatever, it was on, on, on Evening Magazine, and he said, and I was like, oh, he just did it. And I will say this, you know, to be challenged that way, you know, to say, hey, you would never say that on your show. And knowing that, and Andy's right, there's like, there's no way you can fit no. that. You can't how do, do you that say, on your show. How do you say crack whore on, on King Five's evening magazine? But John Curley being not only, I think, you know, like in his mind, like I, I'm a competitor, I will take any challenge. And mm -hmm. also being an, a consummate professional, knowing that, yes, I have to find a way to get this done so that I don't get in trouble with the people I'm working with. Oh my gosh. And he gets it done. Man's a genius. Yeah, I mean, like, that's, <laughs> you know, that's props. He's a donkey props. cheater, but he's a genius. He's a donkey. Well, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Well, he did. He's an admitted donkey cheat. That doesn't sound right. I don't think I... Yeah, I mean... I mean yeah, in context, true. it's not a... Hashtag donkey justice, as one texter put it. Wow. Didn't know we needed that hashtag, but we do. All right. I uh, I have a question. What do you think are the top awkward tasks... I mean, really, this has been pretty awkward, the whole thing. But, uh, what do you think are the top awkward tasks that people are willing to pay someone else to do for them? Well, you know, I'm going to tell you at 817 on The Rock. Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger is back. A flavor spectacle of pretzel proportion. Featuring applewood smoked bacon and hot and juicy beef. It puts beer cheese on top of monster cheese and a pretzel bun on top of all that. Simply put, Wendy's Pretzel Pub puts the E-A-T in greatness. Try one today and see for yourself. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger. For a limited time only at participating Wendy's. You're listening to BJ and Migs Mornings on The Rock 99.9 KISW 99.9 KISW The Rock of Seattle So people were asked this Okay man We know about awkwardness What is the most awkward situation that you've been in And how much would you pay To avoid that awkward situation <laughs> Okay. How about this? This is pretty amazing. Like, people would pay big money to avoid an awkward situation. I mean, this is, we're talking. Oh, dude. I mean, look at the world we're in now. People don't want to have the awkward conversation, so they'll just text each other. Or they'll send, like, you know, a Facebook message. Because the it used to be if you talked to someone on the phone, that was you ducking them. Now that's, like, the honorable thing to do. Right. Yeah. So I'm yeah. not surprised by this whatsoever. The average answer of the amount of money that people would pay. What do you think? Uh, okay, so, uh, Rev, how much would you pay to avoid an awkward conversation? Really? Like, like a legitimate answer? Uh, gosh, probably, maybe a hundy. Okay. Like, uh, if it was like, hey, maybe I can have somebody or pay somebody to do it for me, okay. i give uh, them a hundred bucks. How about you, Danny? Oh, I... Not much, honestly. I'd probably only do like 10 bucks. You I, like, you, I, I you don't like mind. awkward conversations. Yeah, I don't mind awkward situations. Troll, See, I enjoy a good awkward moment because it's always made for a great story later. Yeah. Okay. You but know what I mean? Like, I had someone, a random person come up to me like, oh, I don't even talk about it because like, that's not even worth it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it was so awkward. Wow. That's awkward, huh? Oh. And they're probably listening. And oh. They, they work here. Wow. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But the whole time, I'm like, this is so awkward. This is so, how do I get out of this? This is really strange. 
And the minute that person walked away, I ran right into the studios. <laughs> yeah. And I looked at everyone in here and they're like, oh, you met that person. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I had no oh, idea yeah. what was going oh, on. I'm looking right forward now. to hearing about this awkward conversation. Because yeah. you probably told me, but I forgot. Yeah. Uh, which is so great about all awkward oh, conversations. I can't wait for you to meet her. Yeah. Him. Or them. Someone. Or someone. Yeah. Somebody. <laughs> right now. This is a very awkward conversation. Yeah, okay. Five dollars to move on. Yeah. It's got hashtag Five. awkward. Wow. Yeah. wow! 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 I actually, now I actually, I, I enjoy those kind of inter- because then I go, let's see if I can connect with this person who. Oh, you will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. You know me, I do. I this oh, this yeah. person will be your new best friend. Oh, oh yeah. You know me very well. All right, Vicky. How much would you pay to avoid an awkward conversation? <sighs> If it's awkward, like it's them being awkward or making it awkward, I don't mind those. But if I made it awkward, oh, like a hundred bucks. Just to get out of it. Just right. to get out of it. You guys like, oh, give the crap. person a hundred dollars and say sorry. It's like, I overshared again. Here you go. Bye. <laughs> Obviously, you guys are not really at the level of awkwardness that the average people in this poll were. This, this price is insane. Now, I, I, I would hope they're really being serious. But the average answer that people said the amount of money they would pay, $6,200 to get out of an awkward conversation. What? Awkward situation. Okay. Who did they interview? What's the awkward situation? Like them being like, oh, I had sex with your mom. Oh, that's cool. Then yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, all the money in the world probably wouldn't get you out of that situation. <laughs> You'd be surprised <laughs> what it is, actually. These situations to me are... I mean, I don't consider them awkward. As I look at this list, because you're right, I thought, okay, what is it? It's got to be, like okay. you said, it's got to be epic. So they have a list of awkward. I, I'd imagine that some of these aren't going to be. You're not willing to pay sixty two hundred dollars. That's just something that has to be super awkward. Well, this is what gets me about this poll. The first thing they go, say, hey, how much would you pay to get out of an awkward situation? Sixty two hundred bucks. Okay, and now what are the top awkward situations? Mm-hmm. So my brain goes, really? You pay big money to get out of this? I can see paying some money to get okay. out. Okay, like you guys said, like a hundred bucks. Calling a locksmith after you've locked yourself out. Yeah, it's an awkward situation, but is that really like? Like the top awkward situation. I had in your no life? problem. I called a locksmith after a relationship ended and changed the locks immediately just because <laughs> yeah. I was bitter. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I had no problem with it. It actually was. It was a fun chat with the guy because I was telling him why. He's like, "Oh man, you don't even know how many times I have to do that." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, "She just moved out, and I'm changing the locks. I don't even want her to get See, back in here." I didn't even think of like a house locksmith. I was immediately thinking just. Only cars. Um, oh, yeah. Locking your keys in your car. Okay, like that. that's a little embarrassing. Yeah, because I've done that, but I've gotten my keys out, and I wrecked one of my windows at that point, so I don't recommend it. Oh. Just call the lock. Oh, oh, you tried to do it yourself. Yeah. Well, you watch enough crime movies, you thought, I could do this. I got this. <laughs> I did it. I mean, I didn't break the window. It just never oh, sealed properly. Good job, Vic. I was you all excited. I'm like, I'm going to use a hanger and do it. And then yes. they're like, hey, idiot, a plastic hanger doesn't work. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's awkward. Uh-huh. See, but it's funny Wouldn't because... Wouldn't that be funny? I want to pay $6,200 to get on this. <laughs> I don't understand why this is working. Uh, uh, see, I thought when you, you first brought this up, I was thinking of the Rev. No offense, Rev. But oh, he's, he's shared stories about how he doesn't like to call and like repeat his order like on the phone. Yeah, that's oh, true. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. So, so to me, I'm surprised your, your price actually wasn't higher because I yeah. can see you being like that kind of person who doesn't want to call a locksmith. Well, I, no, if it's something that I need to have done, like if it's a need to do sort of thing, and I've got AAA for that anyway. Like yeah. I'll just oh, call sure. AAA okay. and be like, hey, do everything for They're me. So I already good. pay you. Triple A is the best. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know what? It's like when everybody made fun of me for not knowing how to do man stuff, like change a tire and whatever. And then AAA came along and go, you know what? Uh, you people save my life. I don't have to have. Yeah, this. I don't, I don't have to call a friend yeah, and exactly. have my friend tease the hell out of me because I don't know how to b- fix a battery, change a tire. Thank you, AAA. And yeah. that friend would have been me. <laughs> yeah, the tire one. I'd rather just change it and figure it out on my own. That way, I don't have to wait. It's more about just I don't. Want, I'd, I'd rather get it done so I don't have to wait for somebody. Yeah. You have to have some sort of upper body strength to do that, though, Steve. Just hey, you, just, you put your foot into it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you know what? what you, you, imagine me with one of those crowbar things, the, tw- the twirly ones, the, the cross oh, I'll help you. Imagine me putting my weight into it. Yes. You know I will be impaled with that. And by help you, I will have my cell phone out <laughs> yeah. filming exactly. you. Yeah. You, know, you all background. know me. Just step into it, BJ. Yeah, next thing you know. Step into it. I, next thing you know, I have to go to the emergency room and go, no, I fell on it. And I really did. It oh. didn't get up there on its own. I really in your car is rolling down the hill because yeah. <laughs> oh, you're the one, Jerry. Yeah. Dude, I would pay sometimes. I, I, I want to say to my wife, like, I'll just give you money. Just make the, co- the the order at the coffee stand for me. Oh, really? Get, you, you're, you don't like that? I don't know what it is about the coffee stand. And I, it's like once they make eye contact with me, I get <laughs> flustered. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, they're in bikinis, uh, of course. No, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's, I, that, that's completely understand. The minute they make eye contact, I even though I practice the order in my head multiple ta- times, I'll be like, I want to... 
46 ounce ice something like we don't make 46 ounce drinks I'll, I'll give me the small well, the small is the I'm like I get so flustered and I look at my wife I'm like just order it for us or I'll order whatever she's getting and then I get flustered I'm like make it two and my wife's like you don't even want that drink I'm like it's easier like, I don't even want to add like that's it's so dumb but I get so dude, for some I w- reason that gives me anxiety I would throw stones at you but dude I, it's the same thing I have to know exactly the language I'm speaking at Starbucks because if I go off script I, it's, I don't know what to do. Oh, and then you go to a random yeah. place and you see a grande and they, they, they correct you. Now I'm like, I just screwed it all up. They're going to spin in my drink. Oh. I'm like, I know they're not. I know they're, you, not. Yeah, I, I, I know they're not. I feel like they're going to go, you know who uses that term. We don't. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, this is not a <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> I've literally had panic attacks sitting in a Starbucks drive through with my wife because I was like, what do you want? She's like, I want a chonga bagel. I'm like, that's not a thing. You're just <laughs> screwing with me. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to say it. Oh. And I say, they're like, okay, yeah, no problem. I'm like, okay, I guess it is a thing. See, I really wish she was screwing with you because I didn't know what what Chong was. That'd be so was. great. They're like, that is rude, sir. Keep yeah. driving. Yeah, right? I, d- I don't <laughs> trust on, it. I'm you. like, yeah. Urban dictionary pervert. Yeah. I don't know what it is about making that order, but it, and everything else I have no problem with. And then they read it back to you and they, I'm like, I think that was right, but you said it differently. I'm like, what? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a life hack for you because I have a hard time like making eye contact with anybody. I, I don't know why that is. Might be the ADHD or some other crap I got going on. But I don't look at people's eyes because it's hard. So I look at either their forehead, like right between their eyebrows or their nose. So it looks like I'm making eye contact without actually making eye contact. But see, I'll be thinking, did they know that I'm staring at their nose? Is there, are they I mean, going to get self-conscious you, about me staring at their nose? Can you tell that I'm staring at your nose right now? <laughs> yes. And I know it's big. You don't have to keep looking. I mean, it's... That's why. Why do you think she likes talking to us? Yes. It's a lot to look it's, at. It's a big target. Uh, yeah. She's and like, uh, I want maybe, to find all the Italians in the room, please. Thank you. Maybe the bikini barista thing is actually the right place to go for me. It's not, not because of the sexy girls, but that way I can just stare at their boobs and I don't have to worry about the eye contact. Bring them home and see how that excuse so. goes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's significant others will understand. Yeah, that's right. the reason. It's not it's not the pretty girls, babe, I swear. No, it's I just don't like to make eye contact, <laughs> so I like to make those contacts. <laughs> like, I thought you were going to get Bigfoot Java and you came back and said bikini bottoms espresso. I'm like, yeah, they ran out of cups. They did. They <laughs> got them from the neighboring <laughs> bikini stand. And they're really I, nice people. They're all about therapy there. I, I got you a double D uh, mocha. Excuse me, oh. a double mocha. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if they don't have double D espressos at those bikini stands, they're missing out on a right. sizing. Their sizing should not be grande. It should be just. I should just get a card made and just hand it to them. Act like as if I'm mute. <laughs> there you go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Okay, really? Mm. That's your impression? Mm. Well, I don't know. I can't say here because then they're on to me. BJ. Exactly. But I think if you just go, mm, mm, like you're like in caveman times, they're going to go, oh, look, it's somebody from Land of the Lost wanting a coffee. You can't go wrong with like a, uh. a cheesy smile, a grunt, and then the uh, finger guns. You're like, Oh, yeah, finger yeah. guns, really, from a guy? Right. Really, yeah. 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 Really, yeah. finger yeah. guns? You don't make the noise because you're mute. You just got to do the I can gun sound. Right. Right. Mute people can't make gun sounds? I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. I'm I don't not sure. So. I, mean, I'm not, huh. I don't know. Interesting. Not, I'm, not, I'm not somebody who doesn't have the ability not to speak. All right. So I don't know well, next time I talk to someone who's... Uh, yeah, you can't really... <laughs> yeah. Jeez. You know what? Oh, my God. This is probably a very sensitive break, and we want to, you know, we want to. How much, I get, how much money I have to pay to get out of this? We have to donate. Is what we have to do. There's some charity now. We're gonna have to donate money to because of you. How about this one? This is another thing which I understand because I have been in this situation, and that is repairing someone's fence after backing your car into it. <laughs> That's not done. Wow! Well, congratulations. Yeah, uh, not just fences. I've done fences. I've done mailboxes. I have ruined so many things. Why are you in driving? My life. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question, man. <laughs> well, it's it's a Sarah, conversation. I'm going to pay to get out of it. It's either that or Sarah drives, and I think it's maybe the best of oh, or the worst of two worlds. Oh, oh, what wow. has right. she crashed into? Her his house. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's <laughs> dude. But I can't. I go there because I, I you know, kind recognizes kind, and you know, I know she gets her driving skills from me. It's really where she gets it. How about this? Uh, assembling IKEA furniture for you after. After struggling to do it yourself, in other words, you have oh, to have somebody do it. I would, I would hand yeah. over. I, if so, I just wish there's someone just come over and be like, "Hey, sir, I don't know if you have IKEA in your house, but if you do, I'll put it together right now for ten dollars." I've heard you swearing down the street. I'm sure you're trying to put something together. They have it. They have a yeah, thing called Task Rabbit. My uh, my old roommate used to do that. He would go to people's houses, and an engineer. He went to this guy's house, and when he did it, he's like, "You're like an artist. The way you did that." <laughs> It was Ikea furniture. It wasn't like he was building it from scratch. He was just blown away that this guy was blown away. Yeah, TaskRabbit is cool. Yeah. Wow, to be honest, that's like, cool. I always get frustrated and flustered when I first start Ikea, uh, like putting it together, anything that I had to put together, like recently do outdoor lawn furniture. But once I get into the rhythm of it, 
then it's kind of zen-like. I'm like, okay, I've got things going. You're like my girlfriend. She loves putting that stuff together. And I'm like, you know what? You do it, babe. Just give me some music yeah. Yeah. or a podcast, something that like I can listen to while yeah. I'm doing it. I could get lost in that world. It's also really funny, too, when people come over because they're like, oh, you, the Dan, you put all these together? I'm like, no, no, no not nah. at all. I sat on the couch while she did it yeah. and then fell asleep. See, I love it, too. My thing is I'm an idiot and always end up buying stuff by myself. And then I have to carry it up my stairs, and it's always something oh, heavy. And yeah. like I still manage to do it. I just wow. it takes me like a half hour oh, and you, pushing yeah. it up the stairs. It's not safe. Just open up the box and take it up piece by piece. Oh god, that's worse. Oh, I have to hey. take everything in one trip. Okay. I'm that person. That never even occurred to me, by the way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Steve just said that, and I feel like, ooh. Yeah. Well, I, Whereas I, I other take people the big go, parts and put the bring one in to carry the rest of the box. Yep. Oh, if it's yeah. too heavy. I like how you show me with some. Uh, well, yeah. See, yeah. Yeah. see yeah. moving his arms yeah. up and down. Like, you go open the box, then you wave yeah. your arms, and it magically gets yeah. upstairs. Pretty much. Yeah, okay. This, there's a lot of stuff. Like, I'm going to ask you and Vicky uh, and Danny because, I mean, Rev and I really don't know what this is like, and that's remove a bad tattoo. Is that awkward? To have what a am I ever doing that? I don't yeah. even know how you can do that. A uh, cover up. It. Yeah, cover it up, black it out, or something oh, like yeah. that. Oh yeah, I got something on top of the the tattoo I got for an ex. Is it an is it awkward to do it, that? It was a little bit because the guy who covered it up was also the guy who did it. Oh, and I'm like, yeah, we broke up. Ooh. Oh, and so it was. But he's my buddy, so it was. You know, what's well, better than you being like, look, I hated this tattoo. Right. But yeah. I made. I did this. Tattoo. I still hated it. Fix yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about awkward situations that you'd pay to get out of, and somehow the people in this survey said they would pay sixty two hundred dollars to get out of an awkward situation. But all the ones we mentioned, I don't think any of these are worthy. Uh, of no, not at all. Dollars. How about this? Going to get your stuff after a breakup, which is awkward. I just uh, chalk it up to a loss. Yeah. I think that's what a lot of people Unless do. Unless it was like an animal or like something like Yeah, like it depends on car. what it if it what it is. Like if it was like a video game system or something like that, I would just <laughs> show up. If it was a video, video game, game system. Well yeah, I got priorities. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Most of us would just go get another video game nope. system, but uh, Rev's like, no, I'm getting oh, Those things are expensive. Yeah. They're hard to get an Xbox, man. Yeah. All right. I had one breakup where like they had the Game Boy and I I was like, That's my damn Game Boy. And I just <laughs> thought about it, and I'm like I really could. I, I could live with not had this Game Boy. I don't need to like make this awkward conversation. Aww. Keep the damn Game Boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I well, if it was if it was seen for me, yeah. If it was something like my board games, I probably would go get them. If it's it. not broken yet, by the time you get there. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, right. Then, yeah, yeah awkward. or on the on the front lawn. Ah, uh, yeah. On fire. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing is I feel like anything that I would love, there's always there's a strong possibility it's gone. Yeah. But there, the evidence is there that not it, that it's here, but it's never going to be what you thought it was anymore again because, well, I smashed it kind of a thing. <laughs> Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. According to the first Austin Powers movie, what is Austin's middle name? Powers. No. <laughs> Super. No. Homie. No. <laughs> oh, I was talking like Mark Simpson. At first, yeah. I'm like, who oh, is you this were? idiot talking? <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were doing that. I thought that was just how you... Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Steve was uh, asked to for a birthday wish, and you know what? You, I'm, you, I'm a giver. You give the people what they want. Yeah, you are. I am so mad because I should know that the answer was danger for Austin Powers' middle name, and I did not at the time. You want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another question from a listener. I'm getting my wages garnished. Can bankruptcy help with that? Absolutely. Uh, one of the big reasons people file bankruptcy is because they have a judgment or a lawsuit against them or their wages are getting garnished uh, and so they can't pay their bill, other regular ongoing bills. People sometimes think that you can't file bankruptcy once they have a judgment against them or once a garnishment stop, has started, and that's not true. Filing bankruptcy will immediately stop any garnishment that you have going except for child support uh, and stop your creditors from continuing on with garnishments of your bank account, your wages, um, and in most cases will discharge that liability uh, through the bankruptcy process. And we can file a bankruptcy case uh, for you usually the day you come in. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger is back. A flavor spectacle of pretzel proportion. Featuring applewood smoked bacon and hot and juicy beef. It puts beer cheese on top of monster cheese and a pretzel bun on top of all that. Simply put, 
Wendy's Pretzel Pub puts the E-A-T in greatness. Try one today and see for yourself. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger. For a limited time, only at participating Wendy's.